Praise God. Good morning. It's good to see everyone here this morning. Just want to welcome you. Um, I just want to let you know I am not very polished, so so bear with me. I have some things on my mind this morning that I felt like God put on my heart for today. So if y'all will be patient with me, we'll try to get through this before night. <laughs> uh, it's interesting, Jimmy talked about the fear that's going on in our world today. You know, it's there's some things that's been happening that's that's not only fearful, but maddening. The things that are happening with our with the the guy that's uh, standing in the office of president right now, the things that some of the things that he has mandated and seemingly forced upon the American people. But it's not only in this country. We are not alone. It's worldwide. There is fear and and control, a spirit of spirit of it's just like Nazism. Um, it's it's got back to show me your papers to be able to go into a business or to be able to conduct uh, commerce. I want to open with the scripture in Revelation chapter 13. Verse 16 and 17. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Next verse, please. That no man might buy or sell, say that he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. This is referring to a mark that the Antichrist will force the population of the world to be injected into your wrist or your forehead during the tribulation. This will be a mark that will be able to be read by whatever means they read it by. I don't plan on being here at that time. But I believe, I don't, I'm not preaching that, that this uh, vaccination thing that we're dealing with Show me your papers. Show me proof that you've been vaccinated is the mark of the beast. However, I do believe that it is preparing this generation for the next thing. I believe we're on the verge of Christ coming back. I believe, I believe what's going on in our whole world right now is preparing this generation for, the, for this mark, for this guy to say, without my mark, you won't be able to buy or sell. Without worshiping the beast, you won't be able to buy or sell. So I want you, I just want to make clear that in my opinion, this this vaccination passport, they call it, where you can't get on a plane or you can't go into a business is not the mark of the beast. But I believe it's preparing our generation. I I've noticed I, I take my daughter to school every day. Well, not every day. Angie does it sometimes, but lots of days I take her to school. And to get into the school, they go to the door, and there's someone standing at the door with a temperature gun. And they take, they take a temperature reading on the wrist of each student. Sometimes to get into a building, I noticed last year, during the middle of all the COVID, we went to a basketball game. Y'all probably seen this, went to a basketball game, but to get into the gym, you had to go to a, it was like a kiosk. You had to put your face up there and the temp, and it read your temperature off of your forehead. So they're implementing things right now that are preparing people to be read as you go into a door. We're getting people ready for this mark of the beast that will be in your forehead or on your wrist. So, so that's, that's just an observation that I've made. So how are we to be? What are we, what are we to do to prepare for that? I brought a couple of lamps this morning, and I have some scripture I want to read about these lamps. And uh, before I get started, I just want to, I want to uh, light them. Paisley, you want to come help me? So I'm, I'm going to need a, an assistant. 
could you pick this lamp up and uh, take the globe off of it and set it down? And we're going to light this lamp. Or you can hold on to that. Just hold it up where everybody can see it, and we'll light it. Okay, now you can set the globe back on it. All right, now you set it down. Now let's do it with the other one. That lamp lit easy. Now this one is a this one is a little bit a little bit different. You have to you have to twist the bottom of it and pull that little lamp out. There's a little slot in there. There we go. Now you can set that down. Let's pull that globe off and we'll light that one. All right, hold that up here where right here where everybody can see it. We'll light this one. There we go. Yeah, you can you can set that back on there and just set that down. You don't have to put it back in. Just set it down. It's already out, she said. Hmm. Well, let's try it again. We'll roll it up. We'll roll the we'll trim that wick a little bit and roll it up. Yeah. There we go. It lit that time. Now just put it back on there and set it down. All right. We got two lamps of burning here. We'll just let them burn for a minute. Let's go to uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 24. We'll start with verse 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, nor the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as of the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came, and took them all away. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, and one shall be taken, and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the meal. The one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if a good man of the house had known at what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be you also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. We're talking about the coming of Christ. I, I believe that things are happening right now that that are signs of the times. Signs of the times that we're living in. It talks about the last days here. Back that up to verse 38. They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Things were going on as usual in Noah's day. Noah, however, was preaching. He was building an ark, and he was preaching. He was telling people, get ready. Get ready, the flood's coming. And people said, you're crazy, old man. You're crazy. It has, for one thing, it had never rained. And Noah's saying, it's going to rain so much, it's going to float this hundreds of feet long boat. He's building it on dry ground. So he's telling these people, God's told me, God has said it's going to rain. And it's going to rain so much that Everything's going to be covered. Get on the boat. Let's get ready. Get on the boat. So Noah and his family was the only ones that got on the boat because everyone else thought he was crazy. Everyone else wanted to do their own thing, wanted to live the way they wanted to live. They wanted to live in sin. They wanted to, they wanted to satisfy their lust and their greed until it started raining. When it started raining... I believe some of them probably went. Now, what was Noah saying? <laughs> what did he say? Let's go get on the boat. But it's too late. God had shut the door. God shut the door of the ark before it started raining. If you read that story, I encourage you to read that story in Genesis chapter, I think it's chapter 6, of the story of Noah, how God shut the door of the ark before it started raining, and he sealed it. When God seals it, no one else is going to open it. All right, let's go. Let's read uh, the next chapter in Matthew, Matthew 25. I want to read verse 1 through 13. 
Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened to ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. No oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a great cry. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go you out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give, give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go you rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in to be in with him to be to the marriage. I'm sorry. And the door was shut. The door was shut. And afterwards came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know not the day nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh. Y'all see our lamps? How good they're burning? This one went out, didn't it? I wonder why this one went out. It had a wick in it. It looks neat. It's got a globe. It's got a reservoir. It's got no oil in it. None. It started. It had enough wick to get lit. It got lit, but it didn't have any oil in it. You ever started something and you just didn't have what it took to finish it? There's no, uh, there's no saying about some folks. And you have, I've taught a lot of kids to bulldog. And there's a lot of them that when they get started, they're excited about bulldogging. And they get a hold of some steers and an old steer will take them and, and wallow them around in the arena, knock them down, run over them. And they're done. I call that their, their powder got damp. Or, or they didn't have enough oil in their lamp for that, for that deal. Sometimes I think in the kingdom of God, we don't have enough oil in our lamps because we don't rely on God to help us to get through some things. We allow things to uh, take God's place. You know, that little lamp... Where the oil is supposed to be, it's got air. That's all that's in there. You could fill it up with water, and you'd have something in the reservoir, but it still wouldn't burn, would it? Amen. It takes oil to make these lamps work right. This lamp has oil in it, so it's working right. It's, working, it's giving out light the way it's supposed to. It's not working. It's not toiling. The wick is in the oil, and the oil is coming through the wick. Just the same way that a vine is is a connected to the root, or connected, or a branch is connected to the tree. A branch is connected to a tree, and it the the fruit comes out on the branch, doesn't it? But the the branch doesn't work. The branch is simply connected to the tree. It draws the nutrients from the from the root of the tree up into the branch. Same way this wick. Draws the oil up into the uh, up into the working part of the lamp, and you see a flame. The wick is doing the work because it's in the oil. Praise God! Now, I, now that's something that I didn't think about till right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, the parable of the of the ten virgins here is talking about a wedding. Now, the custom, some of the customs of the time was people would get ready for the wedding and the bridegroom wouldn't be there. You know, in our day, everybody gets ready for the wedding and the bride comes in and we hear the music. Here comes the bride and the door is open and here comes the bride walking down the aisle. Well, a custom in this day was the bridegroom did not come to the wedding until the father told him, it's time. Go, go get your bride and let's have a wedding. They would, know, they would know pretty much approximate time the wedding was going to be because the guests would be there. The, the 
attendants would be there, and they had the lamps. They carried the lamps. They gave light to the, work, to the room. So we're talking about 10 attendants at this wedding that are responsible to bring the light. They all have their lamps, but five of them was, it says foolish. You know, I think they're too lazy to put oil in their lamp. So they wasn't ready. Now the father said, all right, it's time. Make the announcement. They announced the bridegroom is coming. Time for the wedding. The, the, the five virgins that didn't, that didn't have the oil in their lamp said, oh my goodness, we better get some oil. Can we have some of yours? Well, God doesn't give me enough oil for your salvation, Bobby. Amen. I can't save you. Your preacher can't save you. Your mama can't save you. Granddad's religion can't get you into heaven. You have to have a relationship with God. You, that's what the oil is, a relationship with Jesus. Do you have oil in your lamp? Here's what the wedding that Jesus is talking about represents. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Well, Jimmy talked about when he opened, talked about some of the things that's coming on the earth. We've had, we've had this in our church. We've had this in our families here recently. We've had to say goodbye to loved ones, and it's a hard thing to do. Me and Angie was talking the other day, and we were talking about how many, how many deaths we've had here lately. People that we know, people that we love. And it's, it's, it's just hard to say goodbye, but that's part of life. Everybody knows it's part of life. No one's guaranteed to get out of this, this life alive except for one little thing. Somebody's going to be here when Jesus comes back. Somebody's going to be here and going to be ready when Jesus comes back. Let's read 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then when we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Praise God. I'm looking forward to that day. The dead in Christ shall rise first, but the Lord will descend from heaven with a shout. There's an announcement that comes. Now, Jesus talked about the wedding. There was an announcement. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. I think we're going to hear a similar shout whenever the, when the trump sounds and Jesus comes in the air to get his church. The dead in Christ will rise first. We're, this is talking about what we call the rapture. It comes from the Latin word harpezo, which means to be caught up. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it describes this again. Verse 51 through 58. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound. And the dead in Christ shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is law, but thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, immovable, abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Now, that's a part of that scripture is in Christian services is read almost every time in funeral services because we don't grieve like the world grieves. And we know that when the, trump, when the trump of God sounds, when Jesus comes back and takes his church, that we're going to be reunited with our loved ones who know Jesus. If we know Jesus. One more scripture I want to give you. In Romans 13. <laughs> Romans 13, 11. 
and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awaken out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. It's high time that we wake up. It's high time that we get ready. It's high time that we fill our lamp up with oil. It's high time that we have a relationship with Jesus. That's how we fill our lamp up with oil. If we're not walking in relationship with Jesus, our lamp's out of oil. Even if you could light it once, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, your lamp's out of oil and you're in, you're in danger. But if you have a relationship with Jesus and you have oil in your lamp, then you are excited about the rapture of the church. If you're looking forward to Jesus coming and not dreading it, your lamp's lit. You got oil in your lamp. If you're dreading the return of Christ, take stock of your life. Take stock, take stock of how much, how, how much oil's in your lamp. Ask God, to, ask God to show you what you need to do. Hmm. We read on verse 12, The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let's walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, wantonness not in strife and envying. But put you on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. That scripture doesn't sound like you can live any way you want to. Sounds like there's an expectation for us on how we are to live. Christ saves us. When Christ saves you, there is nothing and no one that can separate you from the love of God. But we have an expectation from God to try. <laughs> to try. To allow God to live through us, to be the righteousness of God in Christ. He calls us that. He calls us the righteousness of God in Christ. I just want to ask you, are you trying? Are you trying? Are you working on your relationship with Christ? I fall short. I know when I'm not right with Christ. But it is easy to get right with Christ. I preached a sermon over at Clarendon College for the, the kids over there this week. <clears throat> and it was about the prodigal son. And most everyone knows the, the story of the prodigal son, but in a nutshell, it's, it's there's two sons. One of them gets lost in his badness and leaves. And when things go terrible for him, he decides he's going to go home because... The servants at home had it better than he's got it. And he asked his daddy to be a servant. And his daddy, his, his daddy saw him coming and ran to meet him. He restored him to the family. He put him back in a place of authority. He put him back in a place of sonship. And he had a party. He celebrated because the son who was lost in his badness came back home. There was another son that was lost in his goodness. That was mad because the son that was lost got restored. He was mad because he didn't get the party that the son that was lost got. And the father said, son, he came, he came to that son as well. He came out of the house to that son and said, son, everything is yours. Everything that I have is yours. You are always with me. Don't be mad because your brother is restored. Rejoice with us. So, Preach that there's, there was two sons, both were lost, one in his goodness, one in his works, and one in his, one in his badness, one in his own way. One of them was a son who became a servant and made himself a servant and got restored. One of them was the son who, who thought he was a servant and got lost in serving, got lost in his works. So the moral of that story is, God doesn't want us to drift away from him in, our, in doing our own thing, but he doesn't want us to get lost in good works either. He wants us to have a relationship with Jesus. He wants us to have a relationship with him and have oil in our lamps. So I want to encourage you, church, 
today, it is one step to have a relationship with God. Ask Jesus, ask Jesus to restore you if you're away from Him. Ask Jesus to fill you up if you feel like you're empty. Are you empty today? Ask Jesus to fill you up. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today. We praise you and we thank you for your word today, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are preparing us to come back, preparing for your comeback, for you to return and welcome us into heaven. Father, if there's any in this house or any that's listening to my voice that is not ready, their vessel is not filled with oil. Lord, I pray today that you would fill them up. And I want to ask you, I want to ask you today, is your, is your vessel full? Is there oil in your lamp? If not, I want you to pray this with me. Wherever you're at, just pray this with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I invite you to fill me up. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord, be my Savior. Make me right with the, with the Father. In Jesus' name, I give my life to you. Everything I am is yours. I want a relationship with you, Lord. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. These altars are open this morning. If you guys feel the need to come up front and pray. Thank you all. Thank you all very much for listening to me. And we'll give That's it great to our musicians. and, and We're going to have a song as we go out. and Y'all be blessed this week.